back to our weekly live stream. My name is Alicia, and in this week's lesson, we are going to talk about reflection expressions. We are going to talk about ways to look back on your actions. We're going to talk about some grammar patterns and some vocabulary that you can use to express like the things that you wish you had done or the things that you enjoyed or the things that you didn't enjoy from the year from your life in general, uh, from your day, from any point in time that you want to look back on. So, ooh, I don't So, this is what we are going to cover today. As always, while we wait uh, for everyone to join us live, a couple of quick announcements. First, of course, as always, there is free stuff for you from the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube or above the video if you are watching on Facebook. There is a 55% off discount. Uh, it is the biggest deal of 2020. Last week, I thought last week's was actually the biggest, but this week's is. <laughs> so check this out. Uh, if you want to study uh, with our resources, with our lessons and with our tools at EnglishClass101.com, now is a great time <laughs> to join. So you can find all the details from the link below or above the video there. Please have a look. Uh, the other thing is, as always, if you have questions for me, if you have questions for me about uh, grammar, vocabulary, culture, whatever, if you think of something in the middle of your day uh, and you just want to know about it, you can send it to me for this series. This is a screenshot, an old screenshot from the series. The Ask Alicia series is a question and answer series uh, where I will read your question and maybe answer it in the series. So if you would like to send a question for this series, please send it to me at englishclass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. The link is in the YouTube description. If you're watching on Facebook, please check the YouTube link. Also, you can find uh, this Instagram page from the link in the description. So check that out too. Okay, now we are ready. So I think everybody is here. I see everybody on YouTube. Welcome YouTubers, <laughs> YouTube watchers. <laughs> so hi everybody. Uh, Letty, oh, you say you joined English Class 101 for me? Oh, that's so cool. Thanks for checking out my lessons. Thanks for checking out our lessons. That's super cool. Juan, Alicia, como estas? Bien, gracias, y tú? <laughs> okay. Uh, Irina, Robinson, Kanwalji, David, hi everybody, welcome. On Facebook, uh, I'm coming to say hello to you. Uh, if you're just watching for the first time, uh, I am broadcasting from my house because of, you know, 2020 things. Uh, I'm looking for you, Facebook, where are you? Are you loaded? Yes, good. Matias and Yara, Sarah, hello, Devon, Andrew, welcome everybody. Fantastic. Okay, everyone is here. Let's look at our lesson boards for today. We have a lot to cover. <laughs> I planned a lot for today, so let's look. Today, we're going to look at all of this. We're going to talk about uh, how to use remember with gerunds. Ooh, some grammar today, yes? <laughs> we're going to talk about remember and remember when and some basic patterns. We're going to talk about using the word regret. This is another uh, key vocabulary word for today, regret. And finally, we're going to practice some perfect tense. I wish I had, or I wish I hadn't. Uh, also, I should have. So we have a lot <laughs> to talk about today. Let's get started. And if you have questions during today's broadcast, please send them in the chat. I will do my best <laughs> to respond to you uh, during the lesson, but please know there are many messages coming. I am going to share today's lesson and then get started. All right, I think it's good. Okay, I have shared it. Let's begin. First point for today is about remember. So the first uh, remember reflection expression I want to talk about is uh, using the word remember, remember. So a couple patterns to practice today. First pattern is this one, remember plus a noun phrase or a gerund. So you might think, what's a gerund? A gerund is a verb we create a noun from. So we do this by putting ing at the end of the verb, yeah? That's called the gerund. When we make a gerund, we can use a verb in the place of a noun. So this is very, very convenient. Let me shift my screen quickly. Okay, so 
we can use a noun phrase or a gerund after remember. For example, remember that song from last year? That song from last year is a noun phrase. Remember that song from last year? Or remember going to crowded concerts? Here is a gerund, going. Remember going to crowded concerts? That's a gerund. Mm. So, we can uh, use gerunds in this pattern, but we cannot use the infinitive form here. We can't say, remember to go to crowded concerts. That's, that doesn't work. We cannot use that pattern. You can use this to talk about people as well. So, for example, remember that funny guy in our English class? Here, that funny guy in our English class is my noun phrase. So, this is a question. Remember? Instead, you can say, do you remember something? Oh, people are saying that the video is lagging. Let me see what I can do. Mm -mm -mm. I will try some things. Just a moment. I hope I can fix it for you. It will improve. Let me see. Okay. Maybe now it's a little bit better. Thanks for your comments. Okay. Hopefully that's better now. Okay. So, continuing. Uh, my point here. You can use a full sentence here. You can't say, do you remember, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But in, in casual conversation, we often say just remember, now phrase, or remember going to crowded concerts. This is a more casual way uh, to express that. Okay. Then I want to talk about this other pattern. Remember when subject and past tense verb. This is a pattern you can use to talk about uh, your uh, past actions, your past actions, something that you did in the past or something your friend did in the past. And you want, if you want to express that specific action, you can use this pattern with when, or maybe you know the pattern, remember the time. You might know that too. Remember the time, blah, blah, blah. You can use that pattern as well. Okay? So, uh, let's look at some examples of this. Remember when you ate that really spicy pepper? <laughs> remember when you ate that really spicy pepper? Or remember when we could travel? Or remember when the dog ran away? So, these when sentences refer to like one action or like one condition in the past without when it's a noun phrase. That's the difference in grammar and in meaning here. Okay. Mm. Conwell G says, remember when we watched Game of Thrones together? Good example. Hello everyone on Facebook. <laughs> everyone on Facebook is saying hello. Okay. So these are the two patterns I want to talk about for remember. Now I want to just review quickly some basic past tense comments. Uh, so I chose these because these are very, very common like reactions uh, to these kinds of uh, expressions. So first, that was, that was. So point here, this that, some of you ask like, should I use it or should I use that? When you're talking about like, uh, when you're responding to someone's comment, like, remember that song from last year? You can say, oh yeah, that was good, that was a good song. Or, oh yeah, I really liked that song. You can use that, that to do it. Where that means that thing you're talking about, or that person you're talking about. Mm. So, some very common adjectives you can use. That was fun. That was funny. That was great. That was awful. <laughs> that was bad. That was so good. Or that was exhausting. So uh, these are very common and just quick expressions that you can use uh, to respond to like uh, opinions like these. Chantony has a good one. Remember when we watched Alicia's streams from the studio? Yes, <laughs> I remember that too. Of course. Okay. Uh, other, I don't see other questions. Uh, some of you are saying, uh, someone asked, when do I have to use a past tense verb? When do I use remember and remembered? So 
for these, these are questions. Today, we're, I'm starting with a question pattern. You want to ask someone else, do you remember? So in that case, we do not change this verb to past tense. You can say, uh, I remembered, I remembered something after you recalled the information. For example, you're on your computer. Ah, what's my password? What's my password? Ah, I remembered it. I remembered it. So it's finished. Yeah? That's when you use past tense. Okay. So, uh, oh, last point here. Uh, some other past tense verbs that you can use to respond to these kinds of comments are I loved that. Loved is the pronunciation here. Hated. I hated that. I hated that. I enjoyed that. I couldn't stand that. Or maybe I ate way too much of that. So ate way too much of something. For example, like, hey, remember that cake we had last night? <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Like, oh yeah, I ate way too much. Way too much means like much too much too much. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't see any other questions. So let's continue on. So this will be our part one for today. Now let's go on to part two after a quick break. If you missed it, <laughs> there is a 55% off uh, discount for everybody. The team says it is the biggest deal of the year. Woo! So check it out. If you want to study with our lessons, if you want to study with our materials, please check the link below the video if you are watching on YouTube or above the video. If you're watching on Facebook, you can get premium and premium plus plans on our website and study English. Okay. John says, what is the difference between remember and remind? Ooh, to remind someone means to cause someone else to remember. So like, uh, we would say, please remind me about the live stream. Please remind me, meaning please, like help me <laughs> to remember about the live stream. So to remember means to recall information by yourself. So to remind someone means to do that for someone else, to remind someone. All right, uh, onward. Let's look at our, bo our boards for the day. If you missed it, you can take a screenshot. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay, so lesson boards for today look like this. So much to talk about. Oh my gosh. So we talked about using remember. Now let's practice using regret. Regret is a key word for today. We have a lot to cover here. So let's go. Also, if you have not, please remember <laughs> to like and share this video so that other people can find today's lesson. That would be super, super cool. Okay, uh, onward. Are you live, says Maru Fool. Yes, I am, hello. Okay, let's go to regret. How do we use the word regret? First, what does regret mean? If you don't know, the word regret means a sad feeling or an unhappy feeling about the past. So some action in the past or some condition in the past, you feel sad or unhappy about that. We call that feeling, it's a noun, regret, and we can use this as a verb. So we are going to practice using regret as a verb in part two here. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Um, I see lots of questions that are different from today's topic. If you have questions about something different from today's topic, send them to me for Ask Alicia. Yeah? Okay. Let's go. So, first, I regret gerund phrase. Remember gerund? We practiced in part one. Gerunds are the noun plus ing. Or, I'm sorry, the verb plus ing. Going, eating, sleeping. So, I regret something something ing. Use this pattern when you are sad or you're unhappy about a past action. Mm. For example, I regret eating so much ice cream. I regret eating so much ice cream. This means I ate too much ice cream and now I feel bad about it. <laughs> so maybe you feel sick. I regret eating. This is the gerund form. This is the gerund, eating. So not I regret eat, not I regret to eat. I regret eating. So 
so much ice cream. <laughs> okay, another example. I regret staying up so late last night. I regret staying up so late last night. So, again, gerund form, staying up. When you have a phrasal verb like this one, stay up, to stay up, uh, you don't need to change the preposition to this ing form. Use the ing form with the root verb here, yeah? I regret staying up so late last night. I stayed up too late, now I'm tired. I regret that, <laughs> okay? Uh, Taro says, do you ever say, I regret having eaten so much ice cream? Yes, you can use that having pattern. Um, it will make your sentence sound a little more formal or a little bit more polite. We typically wouldn't use that in like an everyday conversation with friends, but grammatically it's correct. Yeah. Okay, good. Some examples are coming in. Fantastic. Some people, Bhavna says, I regret not buying that dress. Ooh, nice one. We're going to talk about that not pattern later. Good job. Uh, I regret it. Uh, I regretted missing your lesson, Nanda. Try to use the gerund form. Yeah, I regretted, or maybe I regret missing your lesson. Uh, or maybe I regretted, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> we use re regret in past tense is regret, regret. I regret something, something. Okay, let's go uh, to the next one. Uh, I regret buying this expensive bag. I regret buying this expensive bag, okay? So, I bought this expensive bag. Ugh, I spent too much money. I regret it. I regret it. Okay? Then, a negative form. I don't regret. I don't regret. Plus gerund phrase. So, here, this makes a negative. We use this to express you do not feel bad about a past action, but some people might. Some people might. So this one is an interesting pattern. Some people might feel unhappy about a situation or might be worried about a situation, but you do not feel bad about it. For example, I don't regret taking a long vacation. I don't regret taking a long vacation. Again gerund here, not to take. I don't regret to take is incorrect. I don't regret taking a long vacation, okay? Uh, yeah, some people are writing with the infinitive form, like first idea, I regret uh, to broom, maybe you mean sweep, to sweep mm, is the verb. I regret sweeping the floor, maybe my house is messy now, <laughs> so, okay. Um, DLF, what is the difference between regret and regretfully? They are different parts of speech. They are different parts of speech. We cannot use them in the same parts of the sentence. Someone says, I don't regret watching this video. Cool, good, good example sentence. Diallo says, I regret maybe spending or sending too much money. Good examples, okay. Uh, Nahora says, I regret not speaking, not speaking German fluently. Good example. Um, I regret, Jermaine, I regret not making business deals. Make sure to use this ing form here, yeah? Mm. Okay, um, onward. I don't regret spending money on books and education. I don't regret spending money on books and education. So, yes, I'm spending money, but it's for books and education, so I don't regret it. I don't feel bad about it. Okay, good. Uh, Osias Flores says, I do not regret sleeping all day. Okay, <laughs> good. Or Janthony says, I don't regret buying a new computer. Nice, good, good, good. Uh, first idea, again, I don't regret sweeping. Sweeping, not to broom. To broom is not a verb. That's not a verb. I don't regret sweeping. Okay, I don't regret sleeping late today. <laughs> That's another very common one. I don't regret sleeping late today. So you do not feel bad about something, but some people might feel bad about it, okay? Let's go to the last pattern. The last one is I regret not something something. So keep in mind, this has not, this pattern, I do not regret and I regret not. They are different though. These have different meanings, so please be careful. I regret not, something something ing means, you feel bad about an action you did not do. Something you did not do, and now you feel bad about it. 
For example, I regret not exercising this year. I regret not exercising this year. So I did not exercise or I exercised just a little. Now I feel bad. <laughs> so I regret not exercising this year. Okay. Uh, I regret not talking to you sooner. I regret not talking to you sooner. This comparative form, sooner, means sooner than I did or earlier than I did. So, uh, in other words, I took a long time to talk to you and I feel bad. Like, I wish I had spoken to you soon. We're going to talk about that grammar in a moment. All right, uh, some other ones. Uh, Alan Jacom, sorry, says, is it okay to say I have regret not studying marketing? Close. I regret, oh sorry, I regret not studying marketing. I regret not studying marketing, okay? Mm. Isaac says, I regret not taking this class. Good. Uh, Chua Chui, one of our members, hi. I don't regret losing, I don't regret losing bad things or I don't regret losing bad things or I don't regret by, <laughs> I don't regret losing bad things. So choose this pattern. I don't regret plus your gerund, the ing form there. I hope that helps you. Okay. Uh, did I say all of these? No. <laughs> okay. I regret not saving money when I was younger. I regret not saving money when I was younger. So I did not save money when I was younger and now I regret it. We can express that with this pattern. I regret not saving money. So this is how we use the word regret as a verb, as a verb. So all of these patterns use regret as a verb. That means I feel bad about something that happened or that did not happen, or I don't feel bad about it. So as I said, we can use regret as a noun. So uh, you can, someone might say like uh, he expressed regret which means he expressed that he felt bad about something. But it's very common to use it as a verb. Someone asked the question about the word uh, regretfully. We might use that at the beginning of a sentence uh, to mean uh, I'm very, very sorry about this, but bad news. So regretfully, you might also see. Someone says, I don't regret having kids. Good one, Hamdi, okay. Um, others, you don't regret awakening in the mornings. Okay, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> good. Uh, Dion Diana says, I regret to talk with my ex. <laughs> Maybe, I regret talking. So we cannot use to plus a verb there. I regret talking <laughs> to my ex, okay? I hope that helps you. All right, someone says, I regret not watching this live. You're watching it now. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, someone says, how long are you online? 30 minutes every week. So you can join every time. Okay, let's take one more quick break and then we'll go to part three. We'll review some perfect tense grammar, everyone's favorite. Okay, uh, let's take a break. If you missed it, <laughs> there is a 55% off deal from the link below the video. If you're watching on YouTube or above the video, if you are watching on Facebook, <laughs> you can get our lessons and our study resources uh, for premium and premium plus plans. It is, according to our team, the biggest deal of 2020. So please check it out if you would like to study with us. Uh, maybe a good thing to do, a good way to end this year. Okay, so uh, let's look at our lesson boards one more time. If you want to take a screenshot, please get ready. Here we go. Okay, boom. We talked about remember, how to use remember and remember when, and some past tense comments. We just finished regret, talking about regret. And last, today's last point, we are going to talk about uh, these two patterns. I wish I had, I should have, I wish I hadn't, and I shouldn't have. Alrighty, on to the last part then. If you are just joining, please make sure to like and share this video <laughs> so that other people can find today's lesson. That would be super cool. We want lots of people to join. Okay, onward, let's go to part three. Oh my gosh, I'm very pined. <laughs> okay, let's go to the last part of today's lesson. I have two patterns for each group here. They are 
I, so someone asked earlier about how to use had. Here's an example. I wish I had plus past participle verb or I should have past participle verb. I'm not going to talk about past participle verb today. Please use your Google skills <laughs> to find this verb form. I want to talk about these two. The, both of these express regret, that sad feeling, about something that did not happen. So something that did not happen. I wish I had or I should have something something. What's the difference between the two? We use I wish I had typically to when we're talking about a past action uh, like that's like how should I say there are two past actions together. For example, I wish I had studied a language when I was a kid. I wish I had studied a language when I was a kid. That means I did not study a language when I was a kid. I wish I wish I had. So what do I mean two past actions together? See this part? When I was a kid, when I was a kid, so there's like this past point in time, past point in time uh, we, are, we want to mention. This could be yesterday, it could be in childhood, it could be in school. We tend to use I wish I had when we have this past point in time. We tend to use them together. So I wish I had studied a language when I was a kid. Another point, a pronunciation point. We reduce these sounds. I wish I had studied. This I had reduces to I'd. A native speaker would say this sentence as, I wish I'd studied a language when I was a kid. I wish I'd studied a language. So I wish I'd studied is what it sounds like. Let's look at another example. This one uses the should have, should have pattern. With this, we don't always use a when I was something something in the past. It's usually clear. Imagine with this, I should have, you're giving your past self advice. Like you're you in the past, you're getting advice. So I should have exercised more this year. I should have exercised more this year like past advice for yourself. Okay, then I wish I had quit my old job earlier. I wish I had quit my old job earlier. This one uses a comparative form. I wish I had quit my old job earlier than I did. Earlier than I did. That's what this sentence is saying. So I quit my job here. I wish I had quit my job earlier than that. That's what this sentence expresses. So expresses regret about something that did not happen. This did not happen. Let's look at the opposite then. I wish I hadn't. So I wish I had not. And I shouldn't have. I should not have. These negative forms, I wish I hadn't and I shouldn't have, is what this sounds like. These express regret about something that actually happened. This is something that happened and we feel bad about it. We wish we could change it. So some examples. I wish I hadn't spent so much money last month. So that means I spent a lot of money last month. It was not good. <laughs> so I wish I hadn't spent so much money last month. Again, a pronunciation point. I wish I hadn't sounds like wish I hadn't spent so much money last month. I wish I hadn't spent so much money last month. This H softens a lot. Yeah. I wish I hadn't spent so much money. Okay. Let's look at a shouldn't have. I shouldn't have eaten so much junk food this year. I shouldn't have eaten so much junk food this year. Native speed. This sounds like I shouldn't have eaten so much junk food this year. This shouldn't have reduces to shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. I shouldn't have eaten so much junk food this year. Mm. Finally, I shouldn't have taken so long to reply to your message. I shouldn't have taken so long to your message. Sometimes, like right here, I see a very common mistake. Learners sometimes use to here. I shouldn't have taken too long. Mm. Can't use that. 
I shouldn't have taken so long to reply to your message. So that means I took a long time. I shouldn't have taken that long time. That's what so expresses here. To is incorrect, cannot use to. Okay, I shouldn't have taken so long to reply to your message, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can use these to express regret. Something that happened you feel bad about, something that did not happen that you feel bad about. This is how you do it with these two. Okay, uh, I'm looking at your comments now. Uh, free YouTuber says, I wish I had studied English when I was a kid. Perfect, great example. Uh, Kanwalji says, I shouldn't have bought these clothes. We use these clothes, clothes. So we use this for like one object, this sweater, one thing. Clothes is like a category. Uh, Shima says, I should have learning German. Is it correct? No, very close though. Uh, I should have learned German. So past participle verb. Uh, learn becomes learned. I should have learned German. Oh my gosh, your comments are coming very quickly. <laughs> so, uh, I wish uh, I hadn't rushed when I was taking my exam. I wish I hadn't rushed. So uh, make sure to use the past participle form of your verbs. Yeah, everybody. Um, I shouldn't have studied history in, maybe instead of geography, Thimbinkowski. I shouldn't have studied. So many, many, many of you, I think, a good study point for this lesson. Please review your past participle verb forms. Hmm? Yeah, I shouldn't have studied. Mm, I should have learned. So please review your past participle verbs. Yeah, I see that in the comments a lot. That's where many mistakes are coming. Okay. Uh, someone says, hi, what time does this class start? 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday nights every week. That is New York City time. You can Google it <laughs> for yourself. Okay, I will show you that again in just a minute. I have to finish today's lesson because I'm late as always. I've talked too much as always. So I'll show you today's lesson boards one more time. Please get ready. You can take a picture. Boom. All right. So this is what we talked about in today's lesson. How to reflect back on your year, to reflect on things in English. I hope that you learned something. I think uh, regret is a key word for today. Uh, remember is another key word. And also a good study point for many people is to practice the past participle verb form. All right, next week I'll be back, of course. Next week's lesson. Here's the info. Next week I will be back at... 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time, New York City time on December 10th. Uh, if you can't remember that, you can set a notification. There's a little icon, a bell icon on YouTube and on Facebook. So you can hit that and get notification when I start. I'm going to talk about how to express wishes about the past. That means we are going to review this point, point number three in today's lesson. We're going to review this next week. That means if you made a mistake with this part this week, you have a chance <laughs> next week to fix it live or not. So please join me again next week. We're going to talk about how to express wishes about the past with some of the things we discussed today. We'll review that and some other stuff too. Okay, so should be a good time. Please join me again. I have to go. So thank you for all of your awesome questions, all of your great example sentences too. That was super, super cool. Also, please, if you want to study with us, check the biggest deal of 2020, according to our team. <laughs> please check the link below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook for that link. Also, um, thanks for liking and sharing as always. Thanks for your comments. Uh, oh yeah, and for those of you who asked, if you want to find me online, you can find my, con my uh, social media from the link or sorry, from the links in the description on YouTube. Oh my gosh, so many announcements. So enjoy the rest of your week. And